Right back to work. Coffee. Hmm. Ah. Right. Huh? What? No. No. No! Oh yeah. I fixed computers. Maybe I could show you how to do this? Yeah! Right, let's do this. So my computer doesn't want to turn on at all. Now press the power button on and there's no fan spinning, no LED lights and no movement at all. Now, in these cases, there could be a lot of reasons why a computer doesn't want to turn on. But if there's absolutely no movement and no sign of life, the first thing you probably want to check is the power. First, start by locating your socket from the mains plug. Mine is through this extension plug up there, and there's a cable, the power lead, which is also connecting to this computer. This could be one of these two failures, so the socket could not be working, and the mains plug could not be working. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. So I'm going to first check this mains plug, which is connected to the computer. I'm going to plug this into something which I know works, for example, this computer here, and we're going to turn it on. And uh, forgot to put the switch back at the back, so turn it on. Bingo. So we've got power. I'm going to switch that back off. So, which means we've killed two birds with one stone. This is working, and the socket is working as well. So, electricity is coming through. So, in that case, next thing I would want to do is to check the power supply. Now you could also, before you do this, have a quick visual and see whether there are any cables that maybe have come loose. It's quite a common reason why a PC would not turn on, but I've already done some checks, so everything looks okay. So this is one of the main cause of power failure, of a computer not booting up. Uh, second could be the motherboard. In rare occasions, could be the RAM as well, but we're gonna try and test this. So how to do that? First, we're gonna unscrew it from the back. Make sure it's on the off position and unplug the 24 pin connector and the 4 pin CPU connector and unplug any devices connected through. I've got it screwed with a couple of thumb screws which is easily removed. Voila! Put these away. Right, and you need to be careful here. So you want to jerk anything out. Okay, so we'll put this to the side. Now the best thing to do, if you have another working power supply, and in my case I do, this is a known working one which I pulled from a different system, it's an EVGA 430 watt, 80 plus. So I'm not going to place this back in there fully. It's always a good idea that if you have anything to check, to test you do this out of the computer before you before you screw things back in otherwise a pain in the butt to have to take everything out so what you're gonna want to do is I only want to see if it will give power to the PC so plug the 24 pin connector and the 4 pin CPU and that's all I'm going to plug in for now because I'm quickly just going to test if the computer will boot up at least right so we're going to put back the mains plug, it's on the off position for now. I'm going to turn this here and make sure that you can actually see the fan if they do spin, let's see. 
So let's turn this bad boy on and see if it works. I hope you can see this, the fans are actually spinning. Brilliant, and I can hear, I can see something. Let me just turn the light off so you can see the screen. And bingo, voila. So we've got some sort of screen going on. Brilliant, I haven't connected a disc yet, so that's why. So, so that shows me that the power supply was actually not working. But what would you do if you didn't have another power supply which is working at hand? You could always borrow, borrow from someone, but I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can do if you don't have any other power supply to test with. So here's what you do. Get yourself a paper clip and straighten it, then bend it back into a U shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, make sure you have switched off your power supply, which you're going to test, and unplug it. Also unplug your 24 pins connector from the PC and make sure all the other devices are disconnected from the power supply. Now locate the green cable. Let me see if you can if I need to zoom this in for you. Right. Locate the green cable on the one side and insert one end of the paper clip into it and find a black cable on the other side, any black, and just insert the other end of the black cable. Just make sure you've done the right insertion in the right colors and you probably don't want to touch this at this point in time. And now you can plug your mains plug back into the power supply and press on. And I'm hoping that, if I, let me zoom this for you. We're going to turn the switch back on and hopefully, there we go. I hope you can see the fan spinning, which shows that this power supply is actually working. Brilliant. So, we're going to switch that back off and unplug it. It should be now safe to take the pin off. But what we're going to do is we're going to test the previous power supply which wasn't working. So this is how you should test it if you do not have a spare working power supply. So same thing, uh, you might want to find the plug, mains plug, 24 pin, and uh, locate the green. and the black right green black and just let it go plug the switch plug the mains back let's turn this over so you can see the fan and I'm going to turn it back on and no movement, fans not spinning. So this is a quick test that you could do to actually find out whether your power supply. You could also use a multimeter, but this is not for the scope of this tutorial. So there you go guys, that was quite a quick fix. So we got lucky because the problem was just with the power supply. I've got it working now and Linux Mint is in the background, which is can be a video for another time if you want me to show you. Uh, contacted the supplier, uh, which is CCL Online, and it's still under warranty. I bought this in October 2014, so it's under three years warranty. So this reminds me of something which I'm gonna advise you. Do always do two things when you can buy components. Number one, always buy brand reputable components. N not just Corsair, you have plenty of others, EVGA, etc. Um, and number two, always buy from a reputable seller who has a good return policy which is still covered under warranty. Otherwise, I'd be spending out of pocket right now if this wasn't under warranty. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Now I'm trying to improve the audio and the lighting so I can do better videos. So if you have any suggestions, comments, like, dislike, please let me know down below and don't forget to subscribe and until next time, peace out.